You know, you mentioned, um, well, I mentioned your, your daughters. I, I, we have, we have a, something in common here, unfortunately. Um, most of my viewers know I lost my 19-year-old son as a sophomore at University of Colorado to an opioid overdose. Mm -hmm. You've had some issues with, mm -hmm. with Vicodin and other opioids. Can you tell us about it? Yeah. Um, I don't even know if Vicodin, Vicodin is a drug of choice anymore. It's been so long. Um, I know Oxycontin came along after, but I, and I say harmlessly, um, like most, most people who it, it happens too young, before you know it, it's got a hold of you. And of course, I thought I had it controlled. But my second year in the NFL, my first year with the Packers, 92, I, 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 and I'll go back even before that. I assume I took a pain pill before that. I, I, I don't know, college, maybe high school, I, I, but I don't know. But I do remember vividly getting hurt. We played back then, probably till 95. We played three home games in Milwaukee and six in Lambeau. So we were playing the Philadelphia Eagles in Milwaukee and Reggie White was their defensive end. I'm 20, just turned 22. Bulletproof, thought I was at least. And he sacks me and separates my left shoulder. Mm -hmm. Third degree separation, hurt like hell. Right before halftime. So I sucked it up for two minutes, went in at halftime, they injected my shoulder, felt great. I could feel a little popping and clicking, and, but it felt great. I played the second half, we ended up winning the game. And you, we, we drove uh, to Milwaukee. It was only an hour and a half, hour and 45 minute drive. So on the way back, um, me and my wife, she was driving and the, they gave me some pain pills. So they said, when that wears off, you're gonna be in pain. Well, when it wore off, I was in pain. I had a big, big knot on my shoulder. So I started eating pain pills and uh, I can sort of remember it, me feeling good, you know, and talking crazy and kind of liking the effect, but I, was, I honestly was hurting. With every injury I had after that, I made it seem like it was worse off than, than it really was. That one was bad, sprained ankle. And I played, you know, of course, I, I never missed a game. I played on all, all, with all these injuries, but I would, Man, this, I'm telling you, this, this ankle is really killing me. I would do whatever I can to get the pain pills. And, and that's really how it started. And the next thing I know, and this went on for three, four years. Um, probably the last two years, it was every night. So Off season too. Off season. There was no off season. Yeah. Yeah. When, when it gets a hold of you. It, it doesn't let go, you know, and um, what, what uh, a buzz with two pills lasted several months and then I had to go up to three pills and then four pills and five pills. And at, at my peak, I was taking 16 at one night, every night at nine o'clock, I, I was structured. Don't ask me why. But at 9 o'clock every night, I took my pills. Now, if we were playing a Monday night game. 16 could, at one time? All 16 at one time. If I did that today, right now, it would probably kill me. So what was the effect? What were you going, what was happening here? I liked the way I, it did the adverse to me. I, I stayed up and um, just slept about an hour at night. Um, I didn't do anything. No, this, is, I mean, this is later on now. This isn't your first couple of years. This is later on. How how long after you're, you know you're you're with the Packers are you are you progressing through this? I, I won the MVP in ninety five, ninety six, and ninety seven. Ninety five and ninety six um, 
were a blur. 93 and 94 were beginning to be a blur. Where I, somewhere right in the middle, if you would have asked me, do you think anyone knows? I would have said emphatically, absolutely no one knows. And in about the last year during, during this addiction, I thought my wife knew and that was the only person when in fact everyone knew, knew something, something was wrong. But again, you're kind of in your own little world. And I, I was deceiving myself, I guess, because I was playing well, won three MVPs. How could I have a problem? Two seizures, one during the season, one during a routine surgery right after the season. Normal, healthy 22-year-olds, 23-year-olds don't have seizures for no reason. Ultimately, what was determined was the lack of sleep basically short-circuited my brain and the seizure would happen because they were asking me how much I slept. And I said, I lied. And I said, maybe six, seven hours a night. Most of my sleep would be like during meetings. I, I would lean the chair back and like actually good sleep because I'd go to sleep about four in the morning. I'd just sit at the house and just... I may call you at 3.30 in the morning. Was it just the pills, Brett? Was, was there alcohol? What's, what was it? Oh, there was alcohol, but the, 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 the everyday stuff was pain pills. Alcohol, I grew up on the Gulf Coast, and it's, I grew up basically 45 minutes from New Orleans. So uh, it's a, a smaller version of New Orleans where I grew up, down on the Gulf Coast. There's three counties. Everybody that lives south of I-10, the main thoroughfare goes from California to Florida. There's, there's festivals, there's rodeos, there's crawfish boils, there's Mardi Gras. Nothing closes, and that's just the way you grew up. And uh, it was a way of life. And I didn't drink in high school when I got here at college, started drinking. Um, I can't, honestly, I can't sit here and tell you I like the taste of alcohol. I, it tasted horrible. Now, Coca-Cola tastes fine. But Coca-Cola, if you drank 20, it didn't do the same thing that 20 beers would do. Um, but, you know, that's the way of life. That's what I thought. That's, 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 that's the way we do it. And uh, I went to rehab three times. Two times were to address pain pills. The last one was to address alcohol. They tried to address it the first two. Like, you know, they asked me the same question you did. So well, aside from the pain pills, what do you, what else do you do? Do you drink? I said, yeah, I drink every once in a while. I wrote that off as not a problem. And um, the, the clinician says, uh, how much do you drink? I said, well, I'd, maybe every two weeks or something. No, how much do you drink? Do you drink one beer? I said, I start, <laughs> I start with one beer, but I, why do I quit? I don't quit until I've had 20 or I'm digging myself deeper and deeper. Have no clue. Just what an idiot. I, I thought just because I, I didn't drink every couple of weeks or so, which was probably part, part lie part truth. It's what you do when you drink. Do you drive? Do you, do you get drunk? Do you black out? Do you take street drugs? Which I, I've done my share of that too. I think that's surprising. Uh, of, of all, you know, we had a conversation earlier and I want to get to the moment you, you knew it was time to quit in a second, but what, in our conversation we're throwing the ball around. You took street drugs. I mean, Brett Favre, street drugs. When you dr when you drink and you're caught up in a cycle that I was in, and people who've been there could could stand right by me right now and say, "You're right. There's no telling what you'll do." Um, I mean, you obviously are not thinking clearly, and you're not yourself. 
because when I was sober, I thought, what in the hell are you thinking? Obviously, you know, there, there's two different people there. But, but since 98, I haven't drank a drop. And I, I wouldn't even think about taking something. Right, right. But you're not rolling up to a, a street corner. No, buying. no. No, not that that's any, any worse or any better. It, it is what it is. Uh, but this was right towards the end. Thank goodness. Uh, or I wouldn't have played. I wouldn't have played very long. Um, the, the pain pills were the, the most, the most, uh, I mean, I didn't have to be drinking to be wanting a pain pill. I mean, I, I was hook, lying, lying and sinker. How'd you quit? I quit, I quit pain pills first. I quit about three or four times, like most people who start a diet or try to quit something. Um, I argued with myself that I didn't have a problem. I argued with other people that I didn't have a problem. Um, meanwhile, I was hustling to try to get pills. Now keep in mind, a, a normal month script would last you a month. It would last me two days, um, a day and a half really, because I had to be, so after taking the first night, I had to start working to get more pills. And um, this was back when, when the teams would give out maybe two pills. I mean, they just didn't have bottles you could go shake in your hand. And I'd have to, I'd go to you and say, hey, grab, grab me two pain pills. And you didn't think nothing of it. Well, what you didn't know is I had 18, 20 other guys getting their two pain pills. And it was an ongoing cycle. So, um, when I ultimately quit for real, I was, it was off season. I had 12 pills physically in hand, which wasn't enough to give me a buzz. So I've taken 12 pills that would have done absolutely nothing. And the irrationale when you're, when you're involved in this is crazy. But I'm like, 12 pills is like zero pills. And I knew I'd had my second seizure I don't know, a month and a half before. Said I was going to quit. Maybe st stayed off for a week or so because I was in the hospital. But immediately got back on it. And um, I knew that, I just knew that something bad was going to happen. Um, I, I, I could just sense it. And, and I was at the end of my rope. Now, I, in saying that, I've been there before, but when you think you're at the end of your rope, you've realized later on that you were almost, but you were not there yet. And um, I, was, I laid by the toilet for a couple of hours, probably, contemplating flushing them down the toilet and ending it, being over and done with, um, which ultimately, I flushed them down the toilet and almost went in behind them, thinking, why would you do that? But later, that I, only, I found out that that going cold turkey like that could have killed me. Um, but that was the last time I took a pain pill. And I'm telling you, when I say at 9 o'clock for a month, two months, I shook, cold sweats was was the I, I don't I can't believe I weathered that and didn't just I mean I was so miserable I can see where you just go back and say one's as bad as the other but I ultimately got to a point where I, I, I didn't need it and today to have not taken a pain pill so the drinking came or I, I Quit drinking probably a year later. Um, I I, th I thought you know okay I'm done with one, I can handle this. I'm gonna I'm gonna drink because that's who I am. And now I look back and I can't believe that, so, like a lot of things in our life, you know why was I wearing that? Or look at my hair. That's the way I look at some of the things I said and 
I see old pitchers or I would like to look at the team picture in Atlanta, but I'm not in it because I'd stayed out the night before too late and showed up late and missed the team picture. But I'd gained 20, almost 30 pounds from the start of that season to the end of that season. Um, and, and when I see pictures from that season, I, I mean, when I quit drinking, I lost about 25 pounds. And, and actually started thinking clearly for a change. And that was 98. So people say, you haven't had a drop? No, I haven't had a drop since 98. Good for you, good for you. I want to transition to some of those amazing football stats. So one that gets me every single time. Anytime you talk about the greatest of all time, the GOATs, you gotta have, this man has to be in the conversation and you have to talk about 297 and 321. But when you beat the Packers, you were the first quarterback in history to beat every single franchise. And you'd spend it's hard to do. Years. It is hard to do. <laughs> it's kind of like catching your first pass. I'll tell you what's hard. <laughs> That's hard to do. And 290, how many? What's 291, 321 with playoffs. Playoff. That's hard to do. 297 consecutive starts. It's a record. 321 if you include playoffs. I that remember. Will, will never you, know, you know what I remember about that the most? And I, I say this with a chuckle. Um, I never thought it was a big deal. Now, if you knew my dad, you would, it would make a lot more sense to you. There was a lot, very little praise, but tons of tough love. You know, there wasn't like, Brad, proud of you. You did a good job today, son. I would have passed out if my dad would have told me that. <laughs> Um, it would have been pretty cool, but I would have said, Dad, do we need to take you to a doctor? This, were, is, this is Irving. Uh, yeah, we, we called him Big Irv. Uh, <laughs> and he, you're, you're old enough to remember uh, Gomer Pyle. Uh, sure. Sergeant Golly. Carter. Sergeant Carter. That was my dad. He had, a, he had a flat top, crew cut, whatever you want to call it. And... I think part of it was he didn't hear very well. So everything he, my wife says, I do it too. But I know I'm not near like my dad. When he talked, he talked loud. It was like he was always yelling. So everyone was scared to death of him. People would come stay at the house. Like dad would come in there at 6.30. Hi, hey, get that, rake the leaves, blow, blow, blow the driveway off. And guys had just gotten in bed from being out all night and like i'm not coming back to your house anymore man so i read your dad was your coach football my dad coached probably a little more than 30 years at the same high school i got two other brothers he coached we all played quarterback for him and uh, he coached us american legion summer league team probably close to 40 years we played that's some of the best baseball anywhere we American we, Legion we had some studs why'd you pick football it sort of picked me I came here to play both I ended up starting as a true freshman in football and like my dad we, we talked about it he's like if you play baseball you're gonna miss out on spring this is an opportunity that you get to start as a true freshman. You might as well pour everything into it. You'd miss yeah. all those reps in the spring. Made sense. And I think when I was 11 or 12 years old, I got the wind knocked out of me. And if, if you've ever had the wind knocked out of you, you think, you think you're, you're dying. You think you're gone. I, I right. mean, you scream, you're 11-year-old, you scream bloody murder for help. I screamed and screamed and never got help. <laughs> and learned at a young age, buddy, you better get off the field. And so, and, and I love to play. So, you know, a, a couple things that go, I wanted to play. I didn't play my first year in Atlanta. I ended up coming in for good. The third, third game as a Packer, coming in against Cincinnati. 
And can I just jump in here because I remember this moment because I was I was watching, and everyone. The, Medzikowski was all the rage. Everyone thought he was he was he was the it quarterback. He gets pulled mid game. You step in, and I'm going. Who is this guy? Young guy, 22, 23. 22. Lit it. See, lit it up. <laughs> you lit it up. Um, I, well, let me let me correct. I, I let me correct myself. Not the first game. You didn't light it up. You you. you the last drive game, was pretty pretty yeah. good. Which the, which the, was the, a, a winning scoring drive. I'm not. Mistaken. Yeah, we had to. We had no timeouts. Had to go about 80 yards. We had to score a touchdown. And uh, when I I still see that drive occasionally, and I I have to I I, I grin because they had played that game. When I came in, they brought everybody. It was like this kid is raw. He doesn't know a blitz from zone, we're going, and they blitz me every time. And I was seeing ghosts like crazy. I was seeing guys coming from, from the bleachers. And I was running around making things happen, making things not happen. Ball was flopping about everywhere. And that last drive, they did not blitz one time and let me play. And it probably cost them. So uh, another great stat. You're looking at a guy who, on his first ever NFL pass in a game, caught, caught his own pass. Caught his own pass. I don't know if that's – I should be <laughs> proud of that. <laughs> Had I scored, that would have been a different story. I fake it. I got my guy wide open. But there's a defender right there, right between us. And now this is how I developed over the year, over the years. So I'm raw. I do one of these, I see the guy open, I see the defender right there, and, and rather than try to fool him, I just go. Yeah. And he, he bats it right back into my arms. That's what I wanted to ask you. This is your first pass play. First, first pass I catch. You, you caught your own first what, pass. What are the chances that is, of that? That's like my favorite story ever. 